Hi YouTube family, a pleasant good night to each and every one of you. I hope everybody had a warm and wonderful Friday. Today it is minus 19 where I live in Ontario and it is a freezing cold day and night. Overnight it's going to be minus 19 but feels like 20 something. So what's better to have on a freezing cold winter night? Today I prepared a beautiful barley soup with some split peas dumpling and some turkey. Lots of goodness in here and I know you all would want to see how I make it. So stick around and let me show you how I make this. Check out my Split peas dumpling, amazing looking. These are some handsome looking dumpling. Look at that. So let me show you how I make this. For the soup today, we will start with the barley. Before you cook barley, always remember to soak it overnight or at least seven to eight hours. It's a very fine grain. And if you don't soak it, it will take forever to boil. Barley soup is very, very healthy and so satisfying, especially on a cold winter night. And over here, I have some yellow split peas. I'm going to be making some split peas dumpling. So I forgot to soak my split peas and barley overnight, but I'm going to warm some water. And I'll soak these two for at least seven to eight hours. So in you go with the warm water. And this is really going to plump up our barley nicely before I start preparing it and into the split peas the warm water and I will come back to these after a nice long seven eight hours after giving my barley a nice seven to eight hour of soaking time I just rinse it and you can see that it's plumper than when I first added water. So now I'm going to go in and put this to boil in some salted water until the barley is plump enough and double in size to add to our soup tonight. So I just added my salt. I'm going to give it a little mix and I'm going to leave it to cook for about half an hour to 45 minutes or until I'm satisfied with how the grain look. Sister Shanna, big shout out to you. I know you were requesting that I make something with barley a while ago. Today, I hope you'll enjoy this soup recipe. It is a freezing cold Friday. I think a nice warm bowl of soup will do the soul good tonight. So my barley is nicely cooked. Look at that. You can see that it is nice and plump and when you look at the edges you can tell that it is completely done i'm gonna start getting my provision and ingredients together and we will put this beautiful delicious soup together for today's barley soup recipe i have a mixture of cassava edos sweet potatoes and plantain and of course, you know, by the time I'm finished adding all the rest of the ingredients with the meat and the seasoning and everything else, we're going to end up with a nice big pot of soup. Let me get down to peeling all my provision now. So I'm going to start peeling my plantain. I like to cut the two ends and then a long slit from top to the bottom and easily pull it backwards like this and that's how I peel mine another way to peel it you can cut your plantain in small pieces like this and then you just easily peel piece by piece like that this is the same sweet potato that we have in Guyana they have like a pink looking Skin. inside have a nice light yellowish color I really love a nice edo in my soup you don't always get it 
but today I have two and I'm happy about it because I know a piece of it will be in my soup bowl tonight. So here are my fresh ingredients for my delicious barley soup tonight. I have here some flat leaf parsley, mariburi pepper, it flavor up food very nicely. And of course for soup we need a good amount of thyme. I also have here two broad leaf or thick leaf thyme that I'm gonna be adding. I'm gonna be adding some extra onions because I like to add enough onions in my soup. So a combination of the purple onion and the regular onion, some green onions. My provision is nicely chopped up and I have half of a butternut squash here that we will incorporate in the soup and we're gonna have such a hearty soup today. I can't wait for you guys to see the whole entire process. Let me know in the comments below, what is your weather like today? So first of all, I'm gonna start chopping up my onions. And what I like about soup, you can play around with it. You can add different ingredients. You can nice it up as much as you like. And when I'm making soup, I always like to try something different with it. I always change it up so I'm not eating the same soup over and over. So that's what I love about soup. So we're gonna chop up our green onions. So I'm cutting up the broad thyme. So I'm gonna chop up my flat leaf parsley now. Today I'm gonna be adding some turkey into my soup. I'm using most of the bony and some meat part of it, like the back and the sides. I already seasoned it with some green seasoning, black pepper and salt. I'm gonna fry it up until it gets a nice brown color on all sides. And then we will start putting the soup together. This marinade on the turkey smells amazing so the meat reduced some water it have that greenish color because of the green seasoning but i'm gonna let all this natural water completely evaporate until the turkey start frying back in the oil before we go in with any other ingredients in here so my turkey has been frying up nicely and I can see that nice brown color on the turkey. It smells amazing. Like you just want to put your hands in there, take out piece and just bite on it. And the bottom of the pot that have this nice caramelization going on here, that's going to flavor our soup amazingly well. So now that the pan is dry, this is a little bit of oil that I added. I'm gonna go in with my barley in here. So I just added my barley and the water it was cooking in because that water is very nutritious for us. I am just gonna mix it up a little for all that flavor to really, really get into the liquid from the bottom of the pot. And you can see that the water is already changing. It's not only how this smells. It was really good. Very, very nice. So I'm gonna go in with my provision and I'm gonna start adding my ingredients. This is gonna be a lovely soup. So let's add our provision. You can add any provision or vegetable of your choice. These are the ones I'm gonna be adding today. And I'm just gonna mix it up. Of course, I have to go in with more water because I like a nice, rich soup with some delicious gravy in it, not too dry. I'm gonna go in with my thyme. I'm gonna try to keep some of the hard stem out and just add the younger stem. And thyme is a very important ingredient in soup because it adds that delicious, rich flavor to your soup. I'm 
gonna go in with my ingredients and I like to go in half at a time so half of the onion green onion flat leaf parsley and I'm gonna go in with some of the pepper and just halfway of the soup I like to add the rest of the ingredients because you know that your soup is cooking with flavor from beginning to ending that's how I like to do mine. You can add all at once and that's no problem. But this is just me. So I'm gonna go in here now with some water. And I had my water warming up on the stove. And we're gonna cover this and leave it on medium heat so everything can really marry in well. I'm making some split peas dumpling and some pumpkin puree to add to the soup. So we can't forget black pepper. And salt. You can always taste and add more later. You wanna give your soup a nice mix. And don't forget your seasoning that you have sitting aside because that will build more flavor for the soup. So we're gonna cover this down now. And then we'll come back once I make my butternut squash puree. With a little bit of water, I added the butternut squash raw to my blender because when we put it into the soup, it's gonna cook anyways. And I just blend it until it becomes like a puree butternut squash. Any pumpkin can work for this but it adds a rich body, flavor, and color to your soup. So now I'm adding that puree, and it's gonna cook with the soup nicely. I still have half more to blend, and it's gonna give us that beautiful color and body for the soup. Look at that already. And remember, in school back home, pumpkin make your eyes bright. So remember to eat your orange or pumpkin looking vegetable. They are all good for us. The um, orange fruits and vegetable are good for our eyes. So the soup is boiling up nicely. I'm gonna go in with my second batch of pumpkin or butternut squash puree. And this will make it rich the way I like it. I'm gonna go in and give it a mix. You can also add your pumpkin pieces or butternut squash pieces to boil with the rest of the provision or vegetable. But once in a while I like to do the puree because I really like the body it gives to the soup. Here is the split peas I was soaking since this morning. I thoroughly rinsed the split peas I added some garlic and green onion and hubby is going to grind this up for me. So here I have all my ingredients for my split peas dumpling. I have some black pepper some roasted ground cumin and salt. I have some baking powder, some all-purpose flour, and I have my grind split peas. This is not cooked, it is soaked for over eight hours and grind with some um, green onion and garlic. I have here some room temperature water. I'm gonna put the dumplings together. You can add any dumpling to your soup, but this is just my creative dumpling today. So into the flour, we'll go in with our black pepper, roasted jeera and salt. We're gonna go in with our baking powder and I'll leave all the measurements in the description box below. For my vegetarian friends, you can leave out the meat and you can add this split peas dumpling and that's a protein right there and it is so delicious and very filling. I have one of the cup of the grind split peas and about a quarter more. I'm gonna add all of it. So we'll make this dumpling very rich. 
and very filling. So about one and a quarter cup. I'm gonna go in here and mix all together. So now we're gonna mix up all this goodness together. And with that hint of roasted jeera or cumin, you can smell that beautiful flavor in the mixture. So you wanna mix up the split piece first because it's full with moisture to make sure that you're not adding too much liquid into your mixture. So now I'm gonna go in with my water and I'm gonna knead this just like when you're kneading a dough. You can make a sticky version or you can make a form version. Depends on how you like your dumpling. So our soup is cooking up nicely. And look at that. You can see that all the provision and everything has cooked. And I have this beautiful liquid in this soup here. I'm gonna go in with the rest of my ingredients that I have set aside. Because remember, I normally put the ingredients in two batches. So in goes my ingredients, all of it. And then I'm gonna add my dumplings. So with a little bit of oil on my hands, I'm gonna pinch little pieces of the dough and I'm gonna roll them and make circle. And then I'll just drop these into the soup and let them cook. What I like about when I'm making dumpling my favorite part is when you drop it in the soup and you wait to see them just plump up back at the top. Look, one just came here and I can see one is coming up here. One is coming up there as well. That's my favorite part of the dumpling. I'm gonna drop one here and in a few minutes, when you look back, you're gonna see these dumpling plopping up. So I don't know if you ever had an Italian wedding soup. They normally make a little dumpling like this, wrong in their soup. Look, one just come up here, you see it? Yeah. And um, it's a very nice um, flavor. I, I'm not sure what they make it with, but it's kind of wrong and looks something like this. So now I am gonna keep dropping them until I'm done with all the dough. Mm, one just come up. Yeah. And See how excited I get when my dumpling is coming up? And you just wanna make sure that the dumpling is cooked through. You can cut one if you're not sure, and then feel the tex texture of it. And then you can um, be able to differentiate if the dumplings are done or not. So don't sweat when you're making dumpling and worry if the dumplings are done or if they're not. You just cut open one and you can tell if the dumplings are done but these babies are looking nice i like these little wrong ones my kids are going to be happy because they love dumpling and to make it more flavorful and tasty they are split peas dumpling so look at those dumpling there and look at the goodness here oh my gosh my beautiful split peas dumpling i'm gonna let them cook for five to eight minutes because I want to make sure that the flour is cooked and the split peas. But you guys can tell this would be a good one. And those dumplings have perfect, perfect wrong shape. shape. Look at the, the liquid here. That's the liquid goal. So I'm gonna give it about maybe 10, 12 more minutes and we will come back and serve soon. Look at this beauty right here. This is so beautiful. I can just stand up here and admire how those dumplings are jumping around in the pot. 
So let me show you the goodness here and I'm going to start pouring out. Look at that. I have a piece of my turkey. I'm going to make sure that I go in for some of that barley on the bottom. Look at that. All the green in here. My dumpling. And I like when I make soup to go in for a piece of everything. I have plantain, cassava, edos, cassava, sweet potato and edos, all in one dip here. And of course, some pepper in there. I can see the pepper just fell in there, but I'm gonna look for another big piece of pepper right here. Mm -mm -mm. I'm drooling already. And I'm gonna go in with another dumpling, the split peas dumpling and some gravy. What a nice way to warm up your Friday night in a cold, wintry, freezing weekend. Beautiful, look at that. So here is my beautiful bowl of warm to goodness. I'm gonna go in, there's protein, there's provision, there's beautiful vegetable and all that goodness. I have a piece of cassava here. The soup is very, very hot at the moment. So I'm gonna have to take little bites for all my viewers out there. And I know I'm gonna have some that like cassava. Everybody will have a piece of their favorite thing in here. So. A nice spoon with some barley and my cassava. Mm. Mm. The gravy, oh my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. That gravy is so rich. A little sweetness from the butternut squash. Um, you can taste all that flavor in there. I'm gonna go for a piece of the Edo. And to all my Edo friends, Edo always hold heat, so I have to be careful. This is nice Edo, the Edo melt in the soup. Mm -mm -mm. What else can you ask for? What else can you ask for? I'm gonna go in for a piece of the plantain. Mm. The thyme flavor is not hitting at all. And it have a nice spiciness from the marigori pepper. This is just a lovely bowl of soup. I'm gonna go in for a piece of the split peas dumpling because I know you will all want a review on this one. I have one right here. I just cut it in half. You can come closer to show them. And you can see that it's cooked through. I just have to be careful that it's not too hot. Yeah. So this mouthful goes to all my friends who can't have a soup without dumpling. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. That split peas dumpling, the split peas, have a texture in there. It's not um, very fine. So when you bite in, you get a flavor of that split peas. It have such a delicious flavor, a hint of the jira or the cumin for all my vegetarian friends. You gotta try my split peas dumpling recipe. It is amazing for your soup and you won't even need me. So guys, I can't have you watching me eat every single mouthful, but I will sit here and eat for you all. It's nice and warm and I like mine warm. So I'm gonna enjoy this. But if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, we hope you'll consider subscribing soon. Until then, for all my North American friends, please stay warm, bundle up and safe. And all my friends from all over, a blessed and happy weekend. Bye for now.